and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, since we've been talking a lot about the draft treaty, I would like to go a bit more further about the rest of the stuff that the, the Middle East Treaty Organization does. To transform the vision of the zone into reality are strategies to inspire governments to take practical steps towards realizing it. As discussed, we just kickstarted this effort by crafting a living and adaptive draft treaty text presented here in this latest format to form the basis for discussion. And we established a preparatory regional organization named the Middle East Treaty Organization, which Leo went into more focus and detail. Our approach combines our evolving draft treaty text with advocacy work to show government a feasible path forward. Our public outreach campaigns and educational programs, meanwhile, strengthen these efforts at a grassroots level, alongside building partnerships with a broad coalition of civil society organizations. Now, METO's activities operate in parallel to make up our overall process across several work streams. The core focus here is to engage with a broad spectrum of stakeholders, civil society, academia, policymakers, and of course, governments, on how best to advance the establish establishment of the zone. Here, we're just going to a few details about some of our work streams, which involves a draft treaty process. Now, this draft treaty is not just, uh, it doesn't come about overnight, it's developed through a collaborative and inclusive process. And this includes an ongoing series of off the record discussions with experts, diplomats on addressing specific technical and political issues, which the official diplomatic process is faced with. So the draft treaty process is, is long, is tedious at times, but it brings about uh, an ability for us to uh, design an inspiring positive thinking and contribute to the cooperation trust building as, as a form among key, key stakeholders in the region and beyond. At this point, I would like to also invite all of the diplomats from across the region and beyond to be part of these deliberations because they are ongoing. And as has been mentioned, the draft treaty is evolving. So we have never, we will never reach the end point because Ultimately, it is governments who have to put their signatures through their negotiations at the United Nations. Meanwhile, we also have our citizen diplomacy and advocacy work that we are doing, which is an uh, example right now uh, in, in terms of uh, presenting our draft treaty and our way of thinking at uh, relevant major international disarmament conferences. And so this uh, UNGA First Committee side event is exactly part of our citizen diplomacy and advocacy work. But we also aim to cultivate the next generation of practitioners in the peace and security domain. Uh, METO's uh, seminars provide deep insight into disarmament and geopolitics to students across the region. And we had a fantastic uh, seminar, month-long seminar that ended in September, represented by 19 countries, uh, students from across the region. And it was a fantastic deep dive into these issues. And METO's recently launched university network uh, connects students and graduates across the globe to raise awareness and educate the public on the need to create a WMD free zone in the Middle East. Beyond that, if, uh, talking about the public outreach, we also uh, go beyond and, uh, and you know, really uh, advertise and promote a, a wider community to learn about the zone issue, to join us, to contribute, and to shape the path uh, forward to WMD disarmament region, because we believe that we need to galvanize as many people on this issue, because it is so central to our vision of a, a Middle East that is based on security, prosperity for all. And here, uh, we do it through our public lectures, our webinars, our media interviews, and our own podcast series called the In The Zone. If you haven't checked it out, do so with our latest um, uh, interviewee being Beatrice Finn from ICANN. Um, we've also expanded uh, our partnerships across uh, academia, policymakers, and civil society institutions. And uh, these partnerships, of course, uh, just give us a much larger uh, platform to work from and to get our message as wide uh, as possible. Finally, the Middle East Treaty Organization does have a mission and a vision. Our mission is to rid the Middle East from all weapons of mass destruction, but we see this as only a starting point, as a gateway to regional security and peace. And ultimately, 
the vision of a peaceful, integrated and thriving Middle East that is built on human and environmental security. And uh, this is a, a call to everyone that if you want to be part of this uh, exciting journey forward for the region, we invite you to uh, get on, on all of our social media handles and websites and see the different ways you can be part of it. From uh, diplomats and governments, do engage with us one-on-one uh, -on -one and be part of the deliberations in the draft treaty process, but also uh, civil society organizations, others through uh, volunteering work, donations, and of course, uh, just engaging with us uh, on a array of issues that touch on human security and specifically in this very important region of the Middle East. Thank you for your time.